In today's biased news, the U.S. overthrows yet another foreign government, an Ecuadorian presidential candidate is assassinated, and the Writers Guild is winning against Hollywood. Evidence has come to light that indicates the U.S. government took part in overthrowing former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan in April of 2022, following a no-confidence vote in Parliament. At first, Khan had insinuated that he knew of evidence of this development, but afterwards retracted the statement and laid the blame solely at the feet of his successor and the Pakistani military. Since then, Khan has been serving a three-year prison sentence following corruption charges, which prevent him from running for office again, a move he claims is politically motivated. The Intercept recently published minutes of a confidential meeting between the Pakistani ambassador to the US and an American official just a few weeks before Khan's visit to Moscow for diplomatic purposes. In the meeting, the Assistant Secretary of State for the Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs stated that they're, quote, quite concerned about Pakistan's approach to Russia, and their, quote, aggressively neutral position on the Ukraine war. To quote a US official, I think if a no-confidence vote against the Prime Minister succeeds, all will be forgiven in Washington because the Russian visit is being looked at as a decision by the Prime Minister. Otherwise, I think it will be tough going ahead. One month later, the no-confidence vote was held and passed. This follows a long trend of suspicious American involvement in Pakistani affairs, which the US continues to deny. Although the Intercept's claims are still under investigation by various groups, this is not an uncommon practice for the United States. Unsurprisingly, the country that congratulates itself most on democracy and freedom is the one with the longest track record of overthrowing leaders, assassinating notable figures, and orchestrating grand political restructuring around the world to suit their foreign policy and capital interests. On Wednesday, Ecuadorian presidential candidate Fernando Villavicencio was assassinated by Colombian nationals, leading to one death and six arrests. Villavicencio, an anti-corruption advocate, was killed shortly before the upcoming election, causing shock and campaign suspensions. The military has been deployed to ensure the safety of the election process. A video claiming responsibility has surfaced, but its authenticity is, so far, unconfirmed. The assassination has garnered international condemnation and intensified Ecuador's existing challenges. President Joe Biden has signed an executive order that restricts U.S. investments in sensitive technology in China and mandates government notification for funding in other tech sectors. The order, prompted by what the State Department calls national security concerns, is focused on preventing U.S. capital and expertise from aiding the development of technologies that could enhance China's capabilities. The order applies to investments in semiconductors, microelectronics, quantum information technologies, and specific artificial intelligence systems. The move will likely escalate tensions between the U.S. and China, impacting their complex trade relationship. Gunmen ambushed a bus carrying soldiers in the eastern part of Syria, resulting in the deaths of at least 20 soldiers and injuring others. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights indicated that the attack was likely carried out by ISIS sleeper cells, which continue to operate in some parts of Syria despite their territorial defeat in 2019. The ambush marks one of the deadliest attacks by ISIS this year, and signals an escalation in their actions, aiming to demonstrate their ongoing presence and potency. The group recently confirmed a new leader after the death of its former head. The targeted province is divided between Syrian troops, supported by Iran and Russia, and Kurdish-led fighters backed by the United States. Climate fallout continues to claim lives, as the wildfires on the Hawaiian island of Maui have led to the death of at least 53 people and caused numerous injuries. The fires started on Tuesday, spreading rapidly due to dry conditions and strong winds. The flames have caused extensive damage to over 270 buildings, including historical sites. Many people were forced to evacuate, and some sought refuge in the ocean. Thousands of tourists have been evacuated from the island. Of course, the U.S. had no such concern for the locals. The cause of the fires is yet to be determined, but experts point to climate change-related factors increasing the risk of wildfires globally. It's worth noting that those with the greatest carbon footprint in this scenario, the wealthy tourists, are the ones insulated from the consequences of their lifestyle, while the native Hawaiians suffer. China has revealed that it discovered a 52-year-old Chinese national named Zheng who is suspected of spying for the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. Zheng was working with a military industrial group and was sent to Italy for studies where he established a relationship with a CIA agent referred to as Seth. The Chinese Ministry of State Security conducted an investigation, resulting in legal action being taken against Zheng. China has an exceptional track record of rooting out CIA agents, much to the U.S.'s chagrin. 
And in positive news of the day, the Writers Guild of America seems to be winning out against Hollywood Studios, who are now set to resume negotiations after over a hundred days of a writer strike that has severely impacted the entertainment industry. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers has now finally invited the WGA Negotiating Committee for a meeting. The strike has caused financial losses and disrupted production schedules, delaying fall TV premieres and late night shows. The strike has already surpassed the 2007-2008 strike, and is approaching the record for the longest writer strike, set in 1988. Key issues including pay, residuals, staffing, and employment concerns remain contentious. The upcoming meeting is seen as a potential step towards resolving the impasse. That's all for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news. If you'd like to see longer episodes with more in-depth analysis, consider becoming a patron so we can grow and expand.